today I found a poopoo cell of Megasomo elephos and I thought I will try to open it and have a look um, whether it's already a pupa inside or the pre pupa or larva what is the size of this uh, pupal chamber and to transfer it um, to an artificial uh, pupal chamber later so that uh, we can be sure that the pupal chamber doesn't collapse and doesn't bury the pupa or larva so that they will uh, mostly die. You know the problem this is the pupal chamber that I found today in a box. It has a length of about 20 centimeters. When I just take it out like this, if I slowly turn it a little bit around, I feel that there's something inside there. But of course I don't feel exactly whether it's a larva or a pupa. Um, and I will try to open this. Why do we do that? Because mostly we don't have the a normal substrate uh, like the one that the uh, larvae have where they live in, uh, in free nature. So we are not sure whether probably this material that we can offer them is too soft or hasn't uh, enough structure so that the, the pupil cell will stay as it is. Also we have probably here some uh, worms inside and they can also damage damage the pupil uh, cell so that it, as soon as they collapse the pupil chambers mostly the animals die inside of this um, material when they are completely covered they have practically no chance to survive. So let's open it. I also will document this of course with photos, uh, probably to make a book later on to show it also in a printed form. So let's see whether we can manage to open this pupil chamber. Probably we can first remove the outer material a little bit. And then probably we open it from the bottom because that must be the place uh, where the structure of the pupil chamber is the thinnest, that's right. You see it's just, uh, it's just, what's a hole here now? And you see it's moving inside here. And that's of course a big pupil of Megasoma elephas. And I'm very glad that it's a big, a really big female here. So let's take it out very carefully. Clean it carefully from the earth that came into this pupil chamber, and then afterwards we will. <coughs> I will now first look for the the pupa here. Look, it's so big. It's it's um, very long. So how long is it actually? Uh, this must be over around 80 centimeters. That's a uh, real big uh, for a, a female. And as you know already, normally I prepare a artificial pupil chamber with these two uh, peat pots that I pre it in, in, in uh, water, so that it's really sucked up with water but not dripping wet, so it just has to have a, a really good humidity, so that we can put the pupa in there. It looks as the pupa is not very fresh, so that you see this is the color of the pupa. It's not a very uh, light. And now we try to, if 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 we can, if you can, you can carefully remove dirt from the larva. So that's nice. And now we put it carefully into this pupal chamber this artificial one. It's not too long so I can take away a piece of the pupil a chamber in, in the length of the animal and just cover it like that. So the advantage of the peat pots uh, there are a lot of them. First the, they stay humid all the time, they don't dry out so fast. Second they give the animal a good grip when they turn around inside of the pupal chamber. They have to turn on the back uh, to make uh, some uh, the developments. That's what you can see also when you can look through a glass jar into the uh, pupal chamber that they also turn over 
in a, in a certain stages of the a closure process and now I cover it I cover it with um, some of this uh, peat pot material and also I put around I did put some sand in a uh, sand with peat so that's why do I do that sand and peat it's not a nourishment for warmth so there will be practically no other animals uh, in here and the larva can be safe in that kind of a, of a container until it will emerge. So I think that in about three weeks or so we will be um, lucky to see a nice female here because we already have a very nice male so the breeding process uh, goes on. And now I have a look at the purple chamber that the larva made here. This is the skin of the larva. We can probably clean it a little bit to just to show you how it's made of. It's um, the material is chitin also. It's the same material that forms the the outer skeleton of the animal. And of course, this time you can see the skin of the larva. Why? Because they don't. They, ha they can't eat it up anymore because in all the stages of a larva they eat the skin because it contains uh, very good proteins that can be resorbed and used uh, for the uh, building of the body proteins and here you see this is the the head of the the head of the L3 larva and of course here you can also check the size it's um, 14 millimeters. It's a good size for a female of uh, Megasoma elephants. And now let's have a look at the inner side of the pupil chamber. You see it's a longish uh, structure here and what you also can see in here that's probably the thing that are, uh, can be dangerous if if, the, if there is too much of this material in here, so let's have a look whether we can show it to you exactly with a good light. There are very small signs of warmth that came into the pupil uh, cell already, this longish stick-like, bacterial-like uh, things that are mostly excrements of small worms. And if they penetrate into the pupil chamber they can uh, be dangerous for a larva and a, or a pupa that uh, wants to grow inside and wants to develop to uh, an adult. So you pr probably we can see some more of that material that it was inside the pupil chamber here. Normally if the, if the, if there are no worms inside the pupil chamber the walls of the pupil cell, they are very uh, flat and smooth and you don't see any traces of other things in, in the pupil chamber here. You know, that you see here, this is the, this material here inside of the pupil chamber. This must be uh, excrement also of worms and if we try to remove it, then we probably can see the real surface of the pupil chamber here. So yeah, now you see that this is the real uh, surface of the pupil chamber. That smooth wall here, here, that's this, that's the original wall of the pupil chamber. And and if there are too much, if there are too much dirt inside, that can be a problem uh, for the animals. And it's not only that this dirt came in when I opened the pupil chamber. I think it was already before. Uh, it was disturbed by worms or, or some animals that came into this pupil chamber. Here's the wall, you can see it very clearly, that's very smooth. Yeah, that's the pupil chamber. And that's why I don't um, say that you have to do it. <laughs> I, it's just me that I think that we have, must pay attention that the animal is not covered with dirt and dyes inside of the pupil chamber because uh, some uh, worms came in or some other animals because they have not the right material 
uh, to build their uh, structure as they would in uh, free nature. So that's the pupal chamber of Megasoma elephas. If you see from the length of it, if we can close it again, it would be closed like this. So we can guess that the length of the pupal chamber would have been now uh, here about 12 centimeters for an 8 centimeter um, animal. So of course if you try to uh, make an artificial chamber, try to have a size that fits a little bit like this is around 11, 11 centimeters. That should be all right. Also it can move a little bit the structure of this artificial pupa cell, um, the pupa if it wants. So let's see what happens here. I hope we find uh, uh, alive and well female in around two to three weeks. Thanks for watching.